It is Tuesday night. It is 8 o'clock Central Time. Do you know where your DJ's at? I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. Yes, it's Buddy with the DJ Roundtable and as well as our a great a panel of DJs. And we even have a, an, our guest, one of our guest DJs back again. And we want to welcome back uh, Greg, uh, Mr. DJ GJ. Uh, it's always great yeah. to have him on here. Uh, he is the house guru on... Uh, he kind of gives a man a run for the, a run for the money on uh, proms and school dances. He's a school dance guru, but also does some other events as well. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you smash that like button, click the subscribe button, and go to all these guys' YouTube channels because they all have YouTube channels. Watch their gig logs, watch their stuff when they go live, and support them to support this episode of <laughs> Roundtable, as well as it's brought to you by. DJ Brentley's dog. And it must have <laughs> hurt a cat or something. <laughs> we all have pets. So, you know, your cats, your dogs, or the fish. And of course, he's a, a, his associate is with him this yeah. evening, as always in the background. And as well as the having a furry kid there, it's always fun. So, we want to welcome you all for the show tonight. <laughs> and we were just talking a little bit. And I want to give you guys a, a little tech tip in the beginning here. And we were just talking, uh, Jeff was talking about uh, he had a problem with uh, transmitting and receiving with uh, wireless uh, systems for LED lighting. And, you know, a lot of us use LED lighting. I think 98% of the DJ community uses LED lighting. And I think that most of us do wireless DMX for a lot of stuff. Uh, some do still do some areas you guys run cable. Um, but he was explaining that he was right below a, uh, basically an access point for a wireless system for Wi-Fi, and he was having some problem. And one of the things is if you go to either the Google Play Store or the Apple Store, you can find a Wi-Fi analyzer, uh, pay a few dollars for it, get the nice one, the premium one, pay a few dollars for it, have the analyzer, and look at what's going on at 2.4 gigahertz where you're transmitting. And if you're transmitting on a similar thing that's got a higher amount of power than you're transmitting, you may want to switch channels to do that. I do that every time I use my uh, Rockville rock wedges. It takes a second or two to see. I change a channel to see where it's at. And then if I change it to a far enough channel, like, okay, fine, this channel's open. I should not have a problem with it. It helps tremendously. So that's a little tech tip for you guys tonight uh, out there. So, and again, if you're here live, what's up, uh, Jim? I'm glad to see you're here. If you're here live on Twitch watching, you know, welcome. If you are watching this on YouTube, again, either way, you know, make sure you put your comments, critiques, criticisms, questions, or anything else down below. If you're here live, ask questions. The panel will try and answer it. As quickly, what's going on? Hey, hey, what's going on? And welcome. Uh, we have a question, which I sent to you guys a question. And I'm going to read it. And uh, it basically says, uh, hey, buddy, here's a question for the group. So, group, question. <laughs> 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 there was another video posted about spending hours on one wedding. Client meetings, prep, travel time, actual event time. I know everyone operates differently, which we all do. We all have different ways of doing things. Uh, about how much average time do you spend DJing, uh, an average time on a DJ spent on one wedding? For him, it's six hours for a ceremony, for, uh, usually two hours to set up, an hour for teardown. Uh, so you'd say about nine hours. And about 15 hours prior to getting everything. So, you know, meeting the clients, doing music. So forth, so on. So again, you add the nine plus a fifteen. You're uh, about twenty four hours. And like me personally, I'm about tw about twenty five to maybe thirty hours on more difficult ones uh, when they have a big playlist. And it's hard to find some of the songs. So I know, Greg. I know you do some weddings. You do more uh, planning for you know um, dances and stuff like that, prompts and stuff like that. But it still takes prep to do that because. You have a playlist, and it's not as complicated as a wedding, but you've done weddings as well. On average, when you do a gig, 
what how much time do you usually spend doing that gig? How much time do you usually do for prep and and the time of the gig and so forth so on? Were you asking me? Yeah, Greg. Okay, sorry. Yeah, Jeff. I'm sorry, Jeff. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's okay. Okay, I was Greg. Like, Who's Greg. Is Greg here? That's my brother's Greg. name. That's Greg, okay. where, where are you, Greg? That, that, my, my mom and dad called me Greg uh, until I was about 26 years old. So that's okay. <laughs> it's, it happens. Uh, time spent is, you know, with any profession, you're going to have some lead time. You know, you're going to do pre, uh, pre stuff like any DJ or like any caterer or, or any photographer. You know, it's, uh, it, it's, it goes with the territory. Um, for me personally, uh, I've fallen into that category th that the the viewer, the question that came in, I usually get, arrive two, two and a half hours before event uh, start for setup. Uh, it usually takes about an hour for teardown. For the average gig, you know, it's anywhere from, you know, three to 10 hours, you know, depending on what you're doing. Weddings, obviously, if you're there for the uh, for the ceremony and the reception, it's going to take a lot longer. You're there for, uh, for a whole day or, or evening. Uh, as far as what I put into uh, setting up a playlist, you know, just, you know, it, that varies. For weddings, it's a lot more. Um, you know, for a school dance, it's, uh, it's looking at a lot of uh, other YouTube channels and a lot of TikTok uh, to find out what's trending. And uh, that really helps me. Uh, just in this, my most recent um, prom, you know, there was a couple of things that were trending on TikTok. And one was uh, a group of cheerleaders that were saying, we got what you're looking for. We know what you're looking for, something like that. So I downloaded that and I, I threw that in. But, you know, it, it, they loved it. The kids absolutely, they, they recognized it. They looked up at me when I played that and, you know, a couple thumbs up, that type of thing. But, um you know, it, it's, it varies the amount of time, probably anywhere from one to six hours, probably, of time spent before an event getting set up for a playlist. All right. And I'm just, and again, I apologize to you, Jeff. I, I got another DJ's name because I was talking to uh, – you, you, your name starts with a G, and I had Greg I was yeah. talking to earlier today, another DJ, not on here, offline, and I was talking to him for about two hours yeah. <laughs> before this afternoon. So I apologize, both G no, names, good. but I apologize. <laughs> you're good. Uh, I am human. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> Matt looks like he's looking up at a uh, other side of a building there. That's the uh, construction, I, probably. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, Hunter, DJ Cool Thing, how much time do you spend getting ready for your average gigs uh, for a wedding or? Come back, back to me. Well, it depends on how much stuff I bring. Like about a year, like about two years ago, when I DJ a wedding, it was like about an hour and a half to set up, and then about. Because I would do like ceremony, cocktail hour, dinner, reception. I would do pretty much everything. So I guess it's around that same same amount of time, like five or six hours or so. With the four-hour reception and the 30 to 40 minute uh, ceremony. Plus the cocktail hour and the dinner. And a lot of prepping. And whenever I, like before a gig, I would practice like an hour and a half each each day up until the gig. Cool. And, you know, what, what, how much time buddy, total I, do you usually put into? Go ahead, Jeff. I, one thing I forgot to add that uh, just reminded me, you know, charging batteries, you know, before an event, uh, you know, just like you said, prepping, like, uh, you know, practicing. Uh, but also loading from my house into my vehicle, you yeah. know, and then when you get home from the vehicle back into the house, you know, those are things that, you know, sometimes you don't account for that takes time. I, I will tell you the one thing, uh, Jeff, and I, I saw the one gig uh, that I commented on the, the high school gig um, that you rented a truck. That's one of the reasons why I, ha I have my own vehicle. So some things are preloaded cables, you know, the, the stuff that's non, I don't have to worry about extension cords, IEC cables, you know, XLR cables, uh, first aid kit. Basic stuff's always on the van. 
the bigger stuff, uh, you know, I, I move in and out as needed, you know, so it's always a little different, you know, as far as what we have there and pack it. But I, I, I feel the pain because I may have to, you know, get stripped all the way down because, again, there's certain things I leave on the van, you know, um, all the time. But I take the valuable stuff off of the van and want to keep that temperature controlled as much as possible. And it, it's it's a hard, it's a hard time because, again, you add that into your equation of set up, you know, moving things in and out of a vehicle. If you're totally, lock, you know, have a vehicle you can lock away, like some people have a trailer, they lock into a building, they can leave everything on it and lock it away. Hey, it's even less time. But yeah, taking yeah. Th things in and out. Like I have a, my Asteras, I have a wedding Friday. I, I you know, I have Asteras I got to charge. I got to bring those out on, you know, on Friday uh, morning when we leave. Um, everything like that. So yeah, charging batteries, charging up lights, charging this, charging, it takes time. Yeah, yeah. It, it adds up. Yeah, usually for sending up, like loading up in my dad's uh, Pathfinder is like around five or ten minutes or so, about around that time. So it doesn't take that long at all though, so, to load up everything in the car. But how much time do you use to, how much time would you say you do total of prep and everything? Because like I know, and again, this is a great thing you do. You do a little bit of vlogging about it. You usually do oh, like yeah. one or two live sets on YouTube and talk about what you're going to do and figure out your music playlist and so forth. So would you say okay. you're about 20 hours total all in? Would you say you're 25 hours? Would you say you're about 18 hours not, all in? Well, I'm not really that good with math, so I don't know. It's hard for me to keep count. Okay. But, again, I know you put a lot of time in, especially, again, you spent some time. And the music. Yeah, I can't forget about the music, which I do download from my MP3 pool, get that into my hard drive, put in my DJ software, and then I have to – Separate everything from the uh, parts of the event. Yeah, you you build your crates or you build your your uh, your files, your folders. And just like in just like Jeff Johnson, I um, do I do look at TikTok and see what's trending. Like one of the Fourth of July gigs, I played my money go jiggle jiggle, and then they were start singing along. So TikTok has really helped me. The, the find what TikTok TikTok lists are very interesting to say the least, and. There, there are, uh, like, Dish Jockey News does do a really great job of uh, being on top of that for what's what's popular on TikTok. Uh, Promo Only also does some stuff with it, too, to keep uh, you on, in line with the TikTok stuff as well. So there, there's a lot of great services out there, a lot of great resources out there that I would highly recommend to look at also, stuff. Yeah. yeah, I also use the iTunes Store and get music, and then I download to my computer. And so, okay, and then uh, Brentley. I know. Again, you do, you uh, are like me. You have a vehicle for the business. Uh, again, doesn't matter if you have a vehicle or don't have a vehicle. But loading in and out of that van or car or wherever you're loading up in, everything included. What? How much time do you usually spend for a average gig? I'm going to say at least thirty hours for weddings. Okay, at least. And I mean, part of it is my like you know. One thing you were saying was, you know, downloading all of that. But once I download the music, yeah, it's great. I've got it. But the next thing I'm going to do is, you know, back, you know, prep my crates. Then I'm going to take it to my main DJ computer and I'm actually going to cue point all the tracks. I'm going to take that time and I'm going to play everything that I'm not familiar with. Now, the one good thing about how I guess anal about my music crates I am is when everybody, like right now, you see the big scramble of wedding DJs asking, what's hot? What's not? What should I have? I've had, and this is something I was talking about with another DJ today. While most of the wedding DJs have been kind of slow season and not doing much, I've been in the clubs nonstop since end of December, beginning of January. And when my last wedding ended in January until this last weekend, I was doing, I'm doing three and four club nights a week. So I'm seeing what's hitting what I know I can bust out into a wedding set and it's going to work right out the gate rather than having to experiment come the season. So I'm, you know, taking all that stuff I've learned over the past few months and now redoing my wedding crates a little bit, adding a few songs here, pulling some out. So there's all of that. And because I quick mix most of my weddings, like, and actually Saturday was one of the first weddings I haven't really had to quick mix in at least six, eight months. Like, I was playing entire songs out, and I was just like, wow, this is so weird. So I was trading somebody. 
But yeah, the average I'm going to say is roughly 30 hours between the first emails we get or contact with the lead. Now we've gone back and forth. I'm sending them a proposal or a contract so they can sign off on. It. Now, once I've done that, I'll get I'll follow up to them once they've signed and go send them the, you know that thank you message. If there's anything you need while you're planning, need suggestions on vendors, timeline, the whole nine yards, I will send them that and then leave it where it's at for the most part. Then come you know the month of hey, let's schedule a meeting, let's have a phone call, and so we can get that rolling. So by Today, for example, or yesterday, I've spoken to my couples. We're ready to go for this weekend. I have all my notes taken. So that's at least a few hours of just calls. Then I'm going to go like before, like you said, loading your gear. And one thing I don't think a lot of DJs do, but after every wedding or every weekend, I should say, I will go through all my equipment, clean it up, make sure everything's, you know, in the right. You know, I'm pretty anal about it, but tied correctly in the right order so I can pull it out and be efficient when I'm loading or setting up. My average setup is about 90 minutes, maybe two hours. And I know when I'm at my wedding on Friday, I don't have to have an enormous setup and they want my black setup, which is rare. So that's gonna save me 40 minutes in setup time. So I don't have to be as dainty and careful about my you know all black setup. I don't have to wipe it down after I've set it up already. So I'm kind of in that order, but. Then here, when I get it home at the end of the weekend, Saturday being an exception, I actually went out for a change. But I'll get home, go put it all up, make sure everything's in order, cleaned, and good to go for my next wedding. If I've dinged something, I will repaint it on the spot that night so I don't have to think about it later in the week. And plus, Saturday nights generally are the only nights after my – one of the only nights of the week. I don't have my daughter after a gig and won't see her till the next morning. So if I stay up until 3 or 4 in the morning – after a wedding, no big deal. I can get four hours of sleep like I normally do or less and get back to it with it. But that's my average. I mean, club gigs are entirely different because I'm continually prepping my library once a week. And you brought the, you guys brought the TikTok charts or, t you know, the hits. And I will hit Spotify and go through. And Spotify has some great curated lists of top 40 from Billboard, um, TikTok charts, and you can go a little bit deeper from a couple other places. What are the country charts? What are the country bangers? Every genre. Then I'm hitting, you know, Apple Music to see their charts, Billboard, uh, Beat, uh, Beatport, and Track Source. So I do do the dance club thing. So I have to keep up on it. But all in all, if you're, you know, for clubs and the background, I should say back end on that, being so continual, I at least spend 10 to 20 hours a week checking out new music, doing my charts, cue pointing, and mixing through the stuff I'm not comfortable with yet, if that makes sense. And one of the things also, again, I, when I look at charts and stuff like that, I look at it as a, you know, again, people are listening to this stuff, doesn't mean it works well at an event, depending on the event. Because, again, Jeff does, again, he, I know he does weddings and stuff like that and does a lot of different events, but he does a lot of school events. And a school event is different from a wedding, because again, you got a bunch of kids versus more of adultish people, and again, tastes are a little different. Not just because of difference in age or different when they're born; it's because of the fact that you want a little more elegance at a wedding versus at school. Kids, you know, kids request stuff that you will say no to. Versus adults, sometimes you're a little more forgiving with. You can get with a little more windows, you know. Versus a school, you're a little bit more conservative what you do you know kids request a lot of stuff that shouldn't be played at schools and you know something that you have to look at and i'm sure uh, jeff you can probably tell us a bunch of stories about some mm -hmm. of the dances you've done and some of the requests you've had <laughs> i mean right exactly. now yeah right now <laughs> yeah yeah like that's right exactly now that's why i don't take kid any all ages gigs except that are like special needs or weddings oh, i yeah. after seeing some, what some of these djs are going through uh, this year, especially with songs like Slut Me Out topping in the top 10. Uh, oh, yeah, my friend had a, is doing a prom. And he's like, these are all the songs I can't play. And everyone is in the top 20, <laughs> so to speak. And then when you look at the other side of it, looking at the charts, that's the other thing some DJs aren't taking the time to do. I will go through and listen to everything and determine if 
it's ever even going to be remotely viable for me to play. If it's not going to be something that's fits, you know, the party jams from a college bar, the dance floor stuff that I do in clubs or be wedding appropriate from one of those two segue segments of music, then I'm not even going to bother downloading it. If I ever really need it a year or two years later, cause it hits, I can go back and dig for it in a couple of pools or the European pools. Cause that's where the servers are or else download it from iTunes. And that, that's the, that's the hard part. That's, that's why I, re I download everything from uh promo only. Um, you know, they have their pool, um, software and everything comes every single day i download every single day i refresh every day get the emails telling me what's everything even though i may not use it you know not sound bad you know i i've shown this before hard drives you know ha i have a few of them here these external hard drives i fill them up put them on the side you know you have you know two terabytes for you know 2021 two terabytes for 2022 two terabytes for 2023 and so forth you know 2019 you know two terabytes and so forth. And it, it, you keep those around, and then you're like, look for something, you can always pop in that hard drive and see. So you don't have to have, like, again, my computer here, the, the Beast computer I have, has like 12 terabytes of hard drive space, but taking it off and backing it up onto separate hard drives and going back to it and have that library is great. So, Matt, I know you and I were talking about this the other day, um, and we were talking about stuff and about setting up for uh wedding and stuff like that and going through timelines. How much time do you usually do to, to prep for your events? I mean, that's a good question. Cause I, I typically have multiple weddings a weekend. So what I do is I do all my prep on Tuesdays. I get the timeline together. I get all the songs onto my iPad for their special stuff, for their cocktail hour, for their dinner. Uh, typically they just use one of my pre-made playlists for dinner and cocktail hour, but if they have their own, I just add it on Spotify, download it, et cetera, et cetera. Um, then I put all the music in my, uh, iTunes, get the playlist together, um, download anything I need to download. And then Wednesday, I actually analyze it. Like Brett Lee was saying, put all the cute points in there. Um, that way I always analyze everything I download. That way I always have it analyzed, but I'd say like all in, <laughs> I mean, including the actual wedding time, I mean, most of my weddings are 12-hour days, you know, leave at 11, get home by 11, um, give or take, um, or 12 and 12, so probably like 12 hours there. I mean, it, you gotta, it depends. Do you count, like, charging the uplights? Like, yeah, I gotta, I have a whole 24-outlet charging station at, uh, at my parents' house, which is where I charge everything and store half the stuff that I need to recharge just because... I don't really have room in my apartment on the third floor, so uh, nor do I want to carry stuff up three flights of stairs. So, no, I mean, twenty four lights is not a light, light amount of stuff. If you can, if you rolled into your parent, let's say your parents' garage or they have a side, right, right. or you can roll um, it in, it's easy. <laughs> I, I probably, I probably spend about twenty hours total between emails, prep, uh, loading the car, unloading, actual gig time. Maybe not that much. I mean. I, I don't do like I watch Brian's video, which is probably what this is from. I don't I don't test my equipment. I don't uh, back stuff up. I don't I mean, I do, but not like every week. I don't you know, I buy gear that I know is going to work week in, week out. Um, and if it doesn't like this weekend, I had my lighting laptop, the uh, AC adapter where it goes in uh, broke. So the charging port was defective. It, it finally broke. So um Luckily, my girlfriend was able to just swing by my storage unit and grab my, my backup lighting laptop, which I use for lasers. Um, I didn't have time to label any buttons, but I know where all my lighting cues are. So I was able to just run that because it already had all the backups and files on it. Um, getting the computer fixed this week, but uh, like that's an example of if I have, like, if there is a backup that I need, like, I can easily, I have, I have the systems in place to get what I need. So I don't need to spend the time, you know, going through and testing speakers or, I clean stuff at the gigs. Like I always have um, Clorox wipes. I always have magic erasers. That way, like I spot clean. So like my facade is white. I have magic erasers to make it nice and shiny because uh, it'll probably get scuffed in transport anyway. Um, but yeah, probably like fifteen to twenty for each wedding. Um, I don't know though. It's I don't. It's not a trivial amount of time. Some are longer though. Some like if they have. 160 songs that they've detailed out for the night like that's going to take a lot longer than somebody just giving me a spotify playlist with like 60 songs on it and i just kind of add all of those and then 
add 50 of my own and call it good. Um, so probably around that. Okay. So out on the inside, 20, and the outside, probably 30. You could say that? Yeah. Yeah, 30 is probably too much. I'd say, I'd say on the light end, 15, and on the heavy end, 20. I don't really spend more than like, yeah, longer than that. I mean, I don't, I don't do consultations with clients. I don't really do calls. Like, I, I try to do everything text or email. Uh, it's just a lot easier that way. We'll but sometimes set also, up a call. The, the other mm -hmm. thing also is that I know I do it, and you do it, Matt, and Brentley does it. And, Jeff, you do multiple events on a weekend, correct? Uh, it's rare I do multiples. But you have done back-to-back -back stuff. so Yeah, it's, it's rare. It's maybe two or three a year. Okay, so Jeff does it. Uh, Hunter, do you do back-to-back -back gigs? Not really. I haven't been that busy in like okay. two years. I mean, okay. Yeah, since 2022, it's been very, very slow. But when you do back-to-back -back oh, uh, yeah. gigs, yeah. The, you have to take whatever time you're using times by two. So if it's 20 hours... That's forty hours for that week because you have if you have a uh, you know a gig on Friday, and a gig on Saturday. If you're doing like some people here do three uh, gigs on yeah. weekend, that and actually happened to me. Yeah, that hours. happened. To me, yeah, that happened to me like two years ago in November where I had a fiftieth birthday party on Friday and then a, my cousin's wedding on Saturday, so it was like a back to back. So I did a double gig log. Yeah, we had a couple uh, last year. A couple uh, we had. Two, I want to say two weekends or three weekends, which were double weddings. One like one Friday, Saturday, or one Saturday, Sunday, or one Friday and one Sunday. So again, that's 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 another factor you got to put in there if you're if you're trying to figure out how much time you're using for setting up. If you have multiple gigs that weekend, that's that's some extra time to to really set up on things. And it would uh, just it would just be great if my storage unit had power because that would cut down a lot of this time because then I could just. Plug it in, leave, come back instead of having to take it home, charge it. Uh, and then, like, the worst for me, the hardest thing about back to backs is so, I mean, I've tried to get mostly flight cases. So, my uplights, I just plug in the flight case, but I still have to plug in each single uplight. I still have to flip them around, plug them in. And then, all the extra ones are still in bags. I have to take those upstairs, plug all those in, flip them around, plug them in, then, like, repeat the process the next day. Plus, if I have you know, my Mackie thumps I'm using for ceremony, I got to charge those. If I got my tubes, I got to charge those. My battery bank, got to charge that. Uh, my laptop, not my laptop, my, my iPad, my portable charger, my 360 camera. It's a lot to, like, charge at the end of the night at midnight or 1 a.m. when you finally get home. And you got to wake up at 8 or 9, go to the storage unit, pack, unpack, repack, and do it all again. It's it's draining when you have, like, like last weekend when I had three in that one weekend, that was draining. And uh, and then Monday to, to cap it off was another wedding, so four in one weekend. Uh, this was a little easier this weekend because I had two weddings and a, a, a rental and a karaoke last night. But it's still like uh, it's it's a full time job. I mean, when you're a full time oh, yeah. DJ like this, oh, yeah. it's definitely a full time job. Even though you know people see it as like, oh, what do you do all week? Like we spend a lot of time prepping, and then during the weekend, it's it's a lot of hours and it's a lot of manual labor too. So, so Jeff, I know that uh, because you have a lot with schools and stuff like that, you do you're you do it by yourself, right? Or your son helps you out once in a while? Yeah, once in a while, but mostly it's by myself. And yeah, just like Solstice said, you know, it's a, it's a workout. You know, yeah. you can, uh, on some Monday mornings, I guess you all, you know, you feel it if you've been moving speakers and uh, and subs and uh, totems and lighting. And uh, yeah, it it, uh, it hits you after a, a, a long weekend of that. <laughs> it's, well, I, it's I, 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 when everybody says uh, to me there, hey, can I give you a hand with that? And I'm like, you could if you knew where everything goes and how I put it in. You could help me, but otherwise, just you could just stand back and watch because you're gonna. It'll. I'll have to do it twice. Yeah, I also. <laughs> yeah, I also said about myself. It's like very, very tiring. Well, plus also, you, if someone gets hurt, then you got to deal with insurance, and they're not. You know, you're they're not an employee of you. It it, it could open up some some legal headaches we don't want to do. Uh, but. You know, it's one of the things that I, I want to also talk real quickly about uh, the gig log I saw at the, the, the high school prom uh, that you did. And uh, it was your son's uh, school and stuff like that. And I, I, I'll tell you, I was watching it and the kids were just 
going crazy, having fun, enjoying himself, jumping up and down. And I've seen also what Matt gig logs when he does uh, proms and stuff like that. The kids jumping out, having fun. And uh, Bradley, you've done some. You, you you've done a couple proms, and um, I probably haven't done in one a couple in a while. It's been um, God twenty seventeen. But well, I, been, yeah, from I trying. Can't. I, I you know I get I get them here and there. Um, I, I I don't I don't really mark myself for proms, so it's something I don't mark myself for. But I get them once in a while. You know, people are like, hey, I you know, can you come help or do whatever? And one of the things I, I wanted to ask you, uh, Jeff, with that system you had all decked out, and you had, and I said I love the fact you use the Sennheiser transmitter to the side speakers. I thought that I'm like that's what I do. <laughs> I'm like, he thinks it's like me. I love that. <laughs> but with all that sound there and all that sound hitting the kids and how many kids they have total there? Cause it looked like they had probably like five or 600 kids. Yeah. Um, you may have got me mixed up with somebody else. No, I'm my, all my uh, speakers are hardwired. I'm not using any satellite speakers whatsoever. So I had three subs in front of the stand uh, and I had two, of the Mackey SRM215 V class up on stands, they were pretty wide apart. They were on the outside edges of uh, of my totems, so they were on each pretty much the edge of the dance floor. Um, now I'm one, and, and I'll put this out there: I'm one that subscribes to. I do not have to fill that entire room with sound. Um, personally, when I go to an event, and I've heard this from a lot of other people, when they go to an event like that. They want to have some space where they can talk. And I allow that. If they're if those tables on the far ends, now the room I was DJing was from where I was positioned, it was the middle of the room, but it was elongated. You know, it was more of a rectangle. And I was right in the middle playing to the short side. So I didn't worry about the two sides to the far left and the far right. I'm like, those are the people that are just hanging out. They want to talk. So I'm I'm worried about the dance floor. And that's what I that's what I brought speakers for. So, you know, three subs that were just, you know, pounding the dance floor and and two speakers that fill the dance floor and maybe just a little beyond that. But that and that's all I did. But you know, it is it is it was a good setup. And actually, the um, the administrators, you know, they were happy with it. They were like, "This is much nicer than we've done in the past, you know, a few years." So we want we want to have you back. We want you to do homecoming. We want you to do next year's prom. Um, so you know, it, it's a little extra work to put in to uh, to light, like I did. You know, not only my DJ stand, not only the totems, but to put up you know fourteen up lights around the room. Uh, and two uh, movers it, it, that really they thought that was special and uh, you know I'm I'm glad to provide it uh, it's what I do and it's what I'm good at and so yeah I mean I'm, I'm glad to to bring that to their prom and the kids loved it I mean the kids absolutely um, had a blast now I could not I could not handle all the requests uh <laughs> Oh, I, yeah, especially um, that mountain. It, it was, it was, they were running wild and crazy with requests. You know, you could probably see in the video they were coming up like, you know, every song. Hey, can you can you play this? Can you play that? Can you play this? Can you, and, you know, there was one song that they kept requesting, and I had never heard of it. I, and I thought I was keeping up with everything, and um, and and I I didn't have it. And what, what, I, I what song was that? that. <sighs> Good question. Now I forgot it. What it was? Uh, <laughs> Love Sosa. Love Sosa. Okay. So I had never heard of it, and uh, so I downloaded it. You know, there's a clean version of it, and uh, like a lot of the songs, you know, there's a uh, the clean version is just a lot of drum beats for quite a while. <laughs> so it's it is what it is. But uh, yeah, I mean, you know, a couple of dudes came up to me just dripping with sweat. Dude, you gotta play Love Sosa. I'm like, sorry, I don't have it. And no, like one one girl came up. She goes, I've got it on my phone. You can play it off of this. I'm like, can't do that. Sorry, I won't do that, and I can't do that. Um, you know, the 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 one thing is that like your last gig log was with the fiftieth uh, anniversary fiftieth anniversary of uh, high school. Correct. Yeah, yeah that, that right yeah. there. Um, when you did that, and you had everything all set up there, you had the TV going with the music videos. Uh, I love doing music videos for uh, for uh, for weddings, and I feel that it's, it's a fun thing because 
I, I know you had um, you had Jailhouse Rock on there, Elvis. You did on the on uh, your YouTube uh, log, yeah. And it was, I was like, yeah, I have that, and it it it, it catches people because people see that, and they haven't seen the music video in a long time. And you get people that's dancing. And I would say, stop. They're doing it. They're like, their hands are still moving. Their bodies are moving a little bit. But they're watching the music video. It's like, oh, I haven't seen this in a long time. I have, I've never seen this, you know. Do you see that when you do that? Do you see that, that yeah. in action? Yeah, I actually had one person comment. That it was, um, they commented on a, um, I think it was an elementary dance I did. And they were like, isn't that cute how the girls are just staring at you? And I'm like, they're not looking at me. They're looking at the TV on the front of my stand. <laughs> you know, they're not looking at the old guy behind the stand. No, you know, no, they're no. looking no, at no. the music video that's playing. And, no, and um, it, I, I know that um, you have, uh, wait, I'm trying to think now which table you have. You, you have the, um, you have a 50 inch TV in front of your booth? 55. 55 okay yeah um you know that's what that's what my main tv it's, it's a 55 inch 4k it's lg and you know it, it's 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 always a good size tv you know you, you want to have that projection you want to have that uh great look with um with anything and like we're having that that tv on the booth is is kind of fun because uh that is um which which booth you you have the uh, the media the Mesa Media booth right yeah uh, okay. it's the Mesa Media Mark II. I, I had a great the original booth. one. It, uh, it's it's very heavy. Um, you know the 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 bag that it comes with is a really nice bag, and it all fits in there. But I tell you what, it weighs uh, it weighs more than the TV, and it's it's very heavy. And I gave what up I the did, bag. What's a that? Long time ago. <laughs> What's that? I'm sorry. I gave up on the bag a long time ago. I just have it. Oh yeah. I have a couple of bungee cords, but I have the first generation uh, video uh, media uh, case from them. Uh, video uh, yeah, media booth from them, and it is yeah, it is heavy. And I, I just yeah. forgot. Well, I tell you what, I did. I, I I created. I did a hack. Uh, my wife does sewing, uh, okay. so I ordered some of this extremely durable. Uh, like 5,000 whatever off of Amazon, a big sheet of black fabric. And it's like really thick. It's the stuff that like really good bags are made of. I just ordered a big sheet of it, uh, cut it, folded it in half and made just an open-ended bag. Okay, so on that Mark Media, uh, Mason Media Mark II, the, the top shelf, the big shelf, well, the, the shelf that the, uh, the controller sits on, there's also a top shelf where my uh, laptop sits. It's a smaller shelf. I put the smaller shelf in the bag, but the main shelf, that sucker is heavy. So, you know, take it apart. I put it in the bag that I built and and carry that separate. I mean, it's an extra thing to carry, but I'm not breaking my back picking up that bag. You know, it's just. Oh, no. Yeah. So and, it's, and, it's just you, a smart hack that uh, if anybody, you know, out there, if you're thinking about that, definitely, hey, just order some really good fabric off Amazon and get somebody in your neighborhood or or a friend to sew it for you. And it's, it's lasted it's lasted three years now. So can't complain and that, about that. That's the important part is those little little hacks to make things easier and lighter and help you out. And yeah. you, you're you using the, with the, the G28s on the, the, on the LD systems? Yeah, for for some, like not for the prom, you know, the, they uh, they don't get, you know, th their top uh, SPL is about 126, 128, something like that. I can't remember. Uh, you know, you, you really, for a prom, you really need above 130 SPL on your speakers. Uh, that's why I for my proms and the big school dances, I will bring, or outdoor events, uh, I will bring the, the Mackie, SRM 215B class speakers, they their SPL gets up over 132, I think. So I, I, they you know, really... I think I, I think line arrays are undervalued on the on the on the DB because the I I have the Maui fives. I also have the the JH from RCF and the JHs are 128 and the Maui fives are like 120, 121. I think they put out more output than that because it's harder to like a two way cabinet. Your horn is not that far from the woofer, right. versus as on a line array, the woofer is down below, and it's all mid and high on top. So yep. it's like it's it's so far separate. I don't think that 
when they do it, I think they underrate it, not not on purpose, but by accident. I feel it's more more powerful than that. I I, I really I think you really could use those twenty uh, eights on a prom and fill it I up. Could, well. but I could, but I I would be afraid I would blow them. Uh, the the subs, the you know LD, you know the the German engineering on those things are just incredible. What they have done with the two eight inch uh, eight inch woofers in that uh, the twenty eight Gen two is incredible. They put out a lot of bass. Now, oh, yeah. personally, I like a little bit more bass and I'm afraid I'm, I'm pushing them because, you know, I'm seeing them, you know, peak. And uh, so I will bring an 18 inch if I need it. Uh, and I do that quite often. You know, occasionally, if it's a small room, yeah, those LDs are fine. They're, you know, it's kind of hard to put a number on them, but I will say up to 150, 200 people, depending on the room, they're good. They're, they'll, they'll handle it just fine. You get above 150 or 200, and depending on the room, you may want to add a sub. You get up to 500 kids, you're going to need something, you know, that's going to get louder. Oh well, yeah, you, if you if you're you're but, doing 500 kids, you're uh, you're, you're you're like doing what Matt does. You're doing dual 18s. You're doing you're yeah. you're doing four tops. You're doing dual subs. You know, yeah. he does four yeah. dual 18s or dual 21s. With 500 people, you need more sound. Yeah. But now, we'll say this, LD just came out, and you may have seen it, they, their new um, um, uh, 28s are no longer dual 8s, it's now a 12-inch sub, and they'll be out in the next couple of months, hopefully. Uh, I doubt I will upgrade to it, I'm not going yeah, 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 to spend that much money yet. Speaking of that, that, um, I'm thinking about getting the Icoa Sub 15A for my high school reunion, because we're probably going to have 200 plus people. Matt, like, Matt really speaks really highly about LD system subs. Yeah. 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 There's new subs that just came out. Yeah, they're they're considered budget, but they they rock from whatever from all the reviews I've read, they they just will really throw out some bass. Yeah, Matt Matt was talking was talking very highly about the LD system subs. So yeah, it's, it's something about that, that, that German that. engineering man, I tell you, they they know what they're doing. And I tell you, I would I would love to get the new 28s, the Gen 3s. Uh I'm not gonna unless I sell mine, but I'm not gonna, you know, drop that much just for one more, you know, decibel of SPL. You know, I'm not gonna, you know, you know, spend three, four grand for that one decibel. When I've got other speakers that speakers that will do that. So, but if you're getting into a, a column array, you know those LDs, I would highly recommend them. And if you really got the money and you really want the SPLs, then you know go for the um, um, oh, what's the what the next one up from the twenty eight? The forty fours. Forty four. Yeah, those those are just incredible. Yeah, the, the four is it a fifteen inch or eighteen inch sub? I can't remember. They're it's a it's fifteen. Big. It's a fifteen in those. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's and they're big. putting twelves in the twenty eights now. So I don't know why they didn't just uh, rename them <laughs> so, <laughs> instead of two eights. Yeah, but yeah, LD. I, I'm a fan. I, I really am. I'm really uh, after I bought these twenty eights. I'm really a fan. They're super. I really, easy to I really like the, and I, I got really the like white the ones. Five, and good. They look great in any setting, especially if you're going with an all white setup. They just look fantastic. And speaking of all white setup, I know Brentley does all white setup. I have an all white setup with uh, Dude, my Jay. I, yeah, I do an all black setup. <laughs> you, Matt, Matt has all black. Jeff, you have white and black, right? You have both, right? Correct. And then yeah. Matt, you you have a all white setup now and a black setup. Now, for everyone here, I, I know Hunter, you have one setup that's all black, uh, yeah. but. Are you seeing more people wanting the more white setup, or are you seeing people still don't mind the black? No, they don't mind the black. They don't really pay attention. All they're paying attention to is the music. Okay. Yeah, what, it, what picky, picky people will will want a bit want to get white. I've never had anybody request black. Um, you know, for for a specific reason. Um, but you know, the, a lot of weddings, you know. They request white. They want white. Yeah, you know, at oh, at Sam's corner, I did get a request for an, a speaker outside because like we do have picnic tables outside. And they want a speaker there, so I have to figure out a way to connect my DJ system to an outside speaker. <laughs> there's a lot. There's uh, some good stuff that you can get. Uh, cheap, inexpensive transmitters you can get and plug yeah. into the one speaker. And yeah, I might look at Best Buy one day, one day and get a Bluetooth transmitter and use one of my ions for in the connected wirelessly by Bluetooth. 
Holy shnikes, I think DJ Fire's coming in here. Oh! No woo! way! Yes! Oh, welcome, sir! DJ Fire, welcome. what's up? How you welcome. doing? Nathan, it's been a little bit since you've been here. Right. What's yeah. up? back, brother. What's going on? What's going on, guys? We're just talking about the question. And I got to ask you this question because this question came in on an event. What's the total amount of time do you spend for an event? You know, for setup, load in, load out, loading your vehicle, prepping for the event, at the event. What's your total time for an event? A wedding, a prom, a party, whatever it is. What is your total time you spent for that one single event? A wedding, probably. Well, my last wedding uh, was probably by the time, you know, a loading, unloading, moving trailers around, um, getting to the venue, setting up, coming home, doing some stuff, going back for a rehearsal, going back the next day, probably 12 to 15 hours. Okay. Maybe more. Maybe more. Okay. Wow. And then uh, what about uh, when you uh, 12, 15 hours total, including the time at the spent at the event? Prepping music. Yeah, a lot of events together. around here. Don't, like I was booked for that wedding until eleven, and we shut down at like nine, nine thirty maybe. Okay. So, I think things went kind of south once I set the fire alarms off. But um, <laughs> I told the manager at the hotel, you know, hey, they're wanting fog, they're wanting haze. I've got this big machine. Um, oh, well, we had a band in here, you know, right around the time we opened up, and it, um, uh, yes, okay, they yes, sir. off. Well, I set them off, <laughs> and I wasn't thinking about videoing it for the video, but I was kind of in the mood of let's get everything out in case it is a fire. Um, and the groom was. The groom was not even caring that the fire alarms were going off. He was like, uh, you get back over there at your booth and, and you start, um, you know, you keep playing music, keep this thing going. Because as soon as the fire alarms went off, I flipped my switch. I killed the power. I killed the lights. I killed the sound. I said, everybody has to get out. Because at that point in time, I knew uh, 911 was already being activated, uh, which they're like, 911's not going to show up. Well, two fire trucks later, I proved them wrong. Um, a building like that is set up on an alarm system. So immediately, as soon as those alarms go off, the alarm company, whether it's Branks or ABT or whoever controls it, has a light that comes up on their computer that says we have an activated fire alarm at the Hilton Garden Inn in Mattoon. I'm going to go ahead and activate Mattoon Fire. Uh, well, they called CECOM, CECOM Dispatch, Mattoon Fire for, you know, being that new of a building, it's kind of hard to tell, hey, is there something going on or is it just... Um, a false alarm. In this case, it was just a false alarm, but um, they also had an exit door blocked, and I told them that it was against the law. Uh, once the fire captain came inside to make sure everything was okay, he kind of griped at the, the, uh, the uh, groom about that, and I had told the, the fire captain, I said I had mentioned something to him, and he said he paid for the wedding, and he didn't give a shit about laws, and he didn't do all this, and blah, 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 and just it was a mess, but, um, and then not only that, he peeled out, uh, he got this, like, a 97 or an 87 Chevy he rebuilt, restored, and he laid rubber probably for three city blocks, at least, in that parking lot. From all the way down the side that you've seen, I didn't even show the whole black mark. He made a mark from there all the way to the back and around the other side of the building, and management was not very happy with that, so... Probably one of the craziest weddings um, that I've had. Um, this guy also wanted my biggest setup, but did not want to pay for my biggest setup. So when I was setting up my four totems, he wanted my big gold post truss. And I said, that's more money because that's that takes more lighting. That takes, he said, well, I want that. And I said, well, then you're going to have to give me some more money. And he's like, no. And I'm like, then you're not getting it as I'm setting up. So... It well, yeah, it's, it's what you have on the contract uh, when you have set with the contract. And if you have something set in the contract, you don't add. So, uh, Brentley, I got to ask you a question. And I'm going to ask the panel this one. Uh, 
if you are kind of what what what, what Nathan was run into, you are setting up at your your house at the the house that you love, the venue you love. You're always at that one venue uh, on the river, um, and Someone you're doing your normal tip. setup for there. And all of a sudden, they go, "Hey, you know what? Uh, I want the video booth. The video booth you just got the, the Tomatic. I want that added for no charge. I want it right now. Plus, I want all this other stuff that is all optional. What do you do with a customer in that situation?" I've never run into that, ever. Okay. But I think in my initial consultation process, and by the time I've gotten a contract or a proposal into their hands, they know exactly what they're getting their hands on from me. And hand in hand with that, when it comes to our 30-day, you know, hey, everything going okay with your planning, I'll, you know, throw it out there. If you're interested, if they have my basic package, which is just... You know, if I'm feeling saucy, I might bring an all-black facade. Otherwise, it's a couple of black totems and a simple, you know, scrim on the table in black. And But I'll I'll pitch my upsells, you know, be it uplighting, be it booth, be it sparks, be it clouds. And now I can pitch the toad. I'll do that in 30 day out. And if they, okay. at that point, haven't said yes, then I'm not going to go jumping through hoops at all. Okay. So Jeff, what about you? If you're if you're setting up for an event, let's say that fiftieth birthday, uh, that fiftieth I'm sorry, not birthday party, but fiftieth anniversary for the gra uh, graduation party, um, if you ever set them up for there, and all of a sudden they go, hey, you know what? You do X Y Z sparklers, dance in the cloud, whatever extras you didn't have for that event, and they come to you and they go, hey, I want that. What do you do in that situation? Well, I'm, I'm the same way. It's in the contract. Uh, but if they do say something that that they would uh, that, that they forgot, I, I just usually tell them, hey, you know, I didn't bring it. Sorry. You know, that that wasn't agreed upon and it's not in the truck. You know, I've got a suburban that holds a lot of stuff. But yeah, it, it, if, if you don't tell me to bring it beforehand and agree to it, I don't bring it. You know, it's not just sitting there waiting to be pulled out. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, handle it nicely. But, you know, basically it, what's in the contract is, is that's what they're going to get. And that, that's one of the things also is that, you know, I'm sure, Nathan, you didn't bring it with you, the other stuff, too. You probably didn't have it on your trailer. Um, well, Matt, question for you. Yeah. If a customer, yeah. you, you probably heard the question going around. If a customer comes up to you and says, hey, uh, I want your you, you get they get your rugger package, but they want the enhancements of your top package. You know they want the extra sparklers, they want the whatever twenty million subs, they want whatever it is that you don't have there. What do you tell a customer? Like at the event? Yeah, at the event. That's what happened to Nathan. Uh, 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 I, uh, I I sometimes like. I, 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 yeah, no, I don't, I don't like, I don't just magically have it. I, if they ask and I can make it happen, then sure. Like, oh, you want sparklers all of a sudden? Like, and we never talked about it or it's not in the contract. Like, I can maybe make some calls and get them here. It's going to be X amount of dollars. Um, like, I'm willing to go out of my way to try and make it happen. But I, if it's not in the contract, it's, it's not coming with me. Um, I always, though, I always try to like give, I don't always, but, uh, I, I always try to over promise or over deliver, under promise, over deliver. So, like, you know, will they notice if there's a, su a sub or not? I'm like, I, my gold center package says, you know, RCF subwoofers. I mean, I'm bringing ICOA LD system subwoofers. Is anybody going to notice? No. Is anybody going to care? No. If I say dual subwoofers, that's different. But uh, yeah, if it's not in the contract, they're, they're not getting it. Um, plain and simple. I, I just this this guy is just I don't know. I was recommended to this guy by my other friend, and um, he just uh, he just I don't know. It was just like they were like the bride come up to me, and there were songs that wasn't on their playlist that was being played, and they're like, you know, we had a playlist of songs that we we wanted to hear, and I said, uh, these are all requests. You told me you wanted me to take requests, so I'm taking requests. All these baby shark, and these are all kids, and that's pretty much what it was. There was no really adults dancing. There was a few that did like the couples dance and all that, but everybody else was just 
not dancing and it was weird and uh, you know just the kids and then fire alarms went off and then yeah it was just it was a night i tell you and that, that's the hard part so hunter the question goes to you if someone's asking for stuff that you didn't have you know you didn't add to your package you know you they, they said hey you know what uh, i want you to add an extra speaker i want you to add extra lights that you didn't have it wasn't part of the negotiation what do you do at uh, at the event? What do you what do you try and do? Technically, to put it this way, I don't really know because whatever I bring is what they get. Yeah, I'm the same way. Like if they, I don't like, I don't know what to tell you. Like it's not in the contract. We didn't agree to this, but that's the thing is, I always like, I've never had that happen. Knock on wood. Like a lot of my clients don't know, like. They just know they're getting a cool light show. How many lights I use to achieve that light show, they don't care. You know, I, I don't promise to bring the tubes. I bring them every once in a while. You know, that's not a, a main staple of my light show. People don't book me just for a stair tubes or whatever knockoff tubes I have. Or they don't book me just for insane bass. Like, they know they're going to get a great sounding sound system and a cool light show. And that's what I deliver. And yeah, that's, that's, that's kind of trying to do. Yeah, like what I it's like what I said about Sam's corner about needing a wireless speaker. That's what they requested to have a speaker out. Well, yeah, that's, that's requested for next time. If you can, hey, if you can do this, yeah, yeah that's I'll an do it. Um, that's something yeah, that I'll, you know going into yeah. it. That's part of negotiation. And this yeah. is the thing that that uh, 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 that you know uh, Nathan was having, and I, I think Jeff, and I think you know, Brentley, I think you know Matt, myself, you. Uh, as well as, you know, um, Nathan, if it's not in the contract, again, if it's something that you have with you, hey, great. But if you don't have it with you, again, if, you, if you're if you're like Jeff and has, you know, he has an SUV or even uh, Matt and his SUV, he has a Tahoe and, you know, yeah, you yeah, my dad has SUV, a, yeah, yeah, my dad has you know, a Pathfinder. Yeah, you don't have it. You don't have it. You know, if I have it on my van, you know, would, would I do it if it's something small, something simple? Maybe, but if it's something you know major, like hey, I, I I want all white speakers. I want the TV. I want. Well, I didn't bring it because I'm not going to just put a TV head rattling around the back of my van, my van, for no reason whatsoever, or having this in the back of my van for no reason whatsoever. And it's 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 part of the contract and part of negotiation. They come day up and say, hey, give me this. I don't know any DJ would be like, oh yeah, we'll, we'll go ahead and do that. You know, there I'm sure there, there's someone who would do it, but not. I don't think anyone here in the panel will do that. So now, if they're if they're willing to pay, I'm more than willing. Like they tell me on the spot, "Hey, go get your TV booth." Okay, I can do that. It's going to cost you, you know, whatever I've decided to ch I'm going to charge for it. But yeah, I will do that. And there's been a couple instances, like you brought up celebrations, where things have gone awry. I've ran run home to get my video gear just because the videographer didn't show up, and I'm doing. I'm DJing the ceremony, and now I've got two live streaming cameras taking my feeds for it. So something like that I'm more than happy to do, but, like, there's only a few venues I can pull that off at, and they've got to be, like, celebrations that's my favorite one to be at or the ones that are within 15 minutes of my house. Otherwise, it's not going to happen. Yeah, that's very true. And, Jeff, I got one more question for you, sir. The light over your shoulder, what light is that? That is, I'll grab it. <laughs> while, while he's yeah. grabbing that, um, <laughs> sorry I haven't been posting a whole lot. Lawn care business is booming right now. I've got a lot of stuff going on with uh, there. So if you ain't subscribed to New Horizon, know. get subscribed. There's lots of videos coming out. I'm editing one tonight to go up tomorrow. There was one go out today about some jobs I'm going to be doing. That a uh, farmer destroyed somebody's yard. Oh, ouch. Putting in some stuff. Uh, DJ videos. I've got a couple product reviews coming out. Um, Sheds finally got me a light that I ordered about 25 days after I ordered it because they said they were out of stock, but their page said they had over 700 of them. So I don't know what that was all about. So going to kind of do a follow-up video on that. Uh, I've got some stuff I'm shooting with DJ Mike James. The YouTube studio is changing still. Um, so that's why a lot of my videos haven't been coming out a well, whole you, like you, they used you to. You need to get in here next week because, you know, we, we miss you, man. Uh, what like you got there, Jeff? 
This is the uh, uh, the four by twelve mini hex bar um, branding. It's Chinese. Uh, locally, you can get it from both lighting. Uh, now they they've come out with the one with the uh, this one does not have the um, display on the side. Um, the ones now you can actually, I believe they've got the display. You can uh, choose different. Uh, DMX channels. This one is uh, basically uh, locked on channel one uh, for DMX. So, so if I use it with my DMX, it has to be on channel one. So um, but it's a good light. I mean, it, the battery lasts forever. Uh, it's pretty rock solid. Um, yeah, decent little lights for little four by 12 hex bars. You can you, uh, get that from uh, Wish? Or what do you get from? I got it at eBay. I, I, it's straight okay. from uh, both lighting uh, from China. So that's your best uh, price. You know, locally here in Greensboro, you can get them from Rick Webb. Um, you know, they the price on those are going to be a little bit more. He offers the warranty, you know, the local repair. So for some people, it's worth it uh, to pay a little bit more extra. I mean, well, it's probably a lot extra. I, I don't know his exact pricing, but yeah. uh, it's going to be a not, lot it's not. than what's from China. His his pricing isn't isn't very good um but he sent me a, a pair of four for free and i just finished building the fixture profile today so i'm gonna finally use that as like a my my video of how i do my lighting and, and show people how freestyler works and and demo the the both lights and the, the sheds moving head that i have also and yeah I was, I was watching the light go back there and it looked really cool in the back there in that corner there so that, yeah. that that's an amazing thing remote, with up lighting you know. I have this in my man cave, a little mini disco ball. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Is that is that L, is that uh, IR or RF a remote? It's uh, it is RF. Okay. So the, yeah, the, the other ones I have, uh, the other lights, the other uh, hex bars that I have are Chinese. They're uh, they're bigger, a bigger box. Um, I think they're nine by eight or um, uh, six, six by, by eight, eight, eighteen. Yeah, you have this. You have the sim the similar ones to what I have those little box lights. Now those are um, those are RF. Okay. I'm sorry, those are infrared. The, the yeah, remote are. Those okay. are infrared. infrared IR. These okay. are RF. Uh, all right, uh, man. This has already been over an hour, so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we're going we're going to cut it off here, guys. And again, if you haven't done so already, make sure you click that like button. Make sure you click subscribe. Make sure you go to all these guys' YouTube channels. You know, make sure you go to Jeff's YouTube channel. Make sure you go to Brentley's YouTube channel. Matt, and again, I guess DJ Fire, he ran off. <laughs> He's got videos to edit and stuff like that. He's got a couple channels. And don't forget, DJ Cool Thing Entertainment over there, over there with Hunter. And uh, also, uh, don't forget our other DJs, all the links down below. Thank you guys all for coming in tonight. Thank you all for stopping by and watching. And remember, you have a question after that, Put it down below and we'll answer that question. Peace!